Okay, so we're still in third period and we just discovered that we needed to add this to the video. When you see no arrows, we are talking about a compound inequality because you're going to have two numbers. Whenever you have to write this as a part of your answer, even when the lines are there or not, you put your smallest number here, your biggest number here. This is what we call the compound inequality. I'm using two numbers. There are no arrows. I have a start and an end. This is a compound inequality. Two inequalities put into one. It's like buy one, get one free. You get two, but you only pay for one. So this is paying for one, but it's still two different things. So let's practice this some more with number four. I would love for you to do it first and then tell me what you got. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's do number four. And I'm going to silently do it on the video so for those that are watching, they see the answer. I've done number four for them. Now I'm going to do number seven for the video so they can have it as you finish four, um, third period. After you finish four, go ahead and do number seven. I'm doing number seven for those um, at home that are watching the video. Okay, now I know you're still working, but I want to see how well you did. Can you tell me the two numbers you used for the domain on number four? Negative three, good job. And positive four. Now, am I circling the open circle or am I trying to circle the negative three? The negative three, good job. Good job, Lewis. Good job. I am uh, trying to circle the negative three. And then here I'm circling the 4. So how did you write your answer? Negative 3 less than x less than 4. Good job. What did you get for the range? Negative 1 less than less than what go y, which is less than 4. Good job. And that's absolutely correct. Good job.